Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Second Cup of Coffee. So glad to be with you, Pastor Tom. Brandon stepping in, back, front, in front of the camera um, as he does from time to time because we so appreciate his wisdom um, and on the topics that we're going through. The last uh, several weeks we've been going through the series All In. Uh, we're going to wrap that up with a conversation today. Next week we're going to do, it's the fifth uh, Thursday of the month, so we'll do a reheat, um, which uh, will be fun. We'll put one of our old um, second cups and, and, and put that out. Brandon, we want to talk about being all in and uh, some of the side conversations and back conversations people aren't privy to. Um, we've had some of these conversations and you asked me the question, what does it mean to be all in? And and um, I think for me, when you ask that question, to me, it goes back to, did you, where do you, if you're all in, you have to know who you're all in with. Yeah. And that can't be in debate, right? And so, um, in, in John, we talked to John 6 last time, guys, we ended with uh, Peter saying, Hey, we've come to uh, believe and to know that you are the Christ, or the, the Messiah, the, the risen Christ, or the Christ. He hasn't risen at that point. But anyway, that whole conversation starts with an argument in the church about who Jesus really was. And um, it, it culminates with Jesus saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood, which he was saying, but he wasn't saying. He was saying, like, yeah. if you don't accept the crucifixion, which you don't even see coming, you really have no part in me. Um, but Brandon, it says from, on John six sixty six that from that point, many people either went away or went in the back away from Jesus because the saying was hard and they didn't yeah. understand. Now, I, I, we're going to launch off this in a second, right? Or we're going to launch off this, guys. What happens, you were, when you know, okay, probably two things happen pretty quickly when you come to Christ. One, you know that you accepted Christ. Two, you know you want to do something or you're called to do something in Christ. Right. Okay. Right. So that's who these people are, and they're walking with him, right? Yeah. And then something difficult happens. It can be, I didn't understand that. Like, I don't understand something in the Word. I'm reading through the Old Testament. That sounds like genocide to me. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I don't understand Revelation. It freaks me out or whatever it is. Or you hear a message or maybe you have an interaction and something happens. Okay, I'm just going to leave it simple for today. Can you walk us through a little bit of how, how that looks? Let me say it a different way. When that happens, how do you get to where Peter ended up and said, look, I don't understand, but I've come to know and yeah. to believe. Because I think that's that is a that is a bridge that seems to trip up a lot of people. Like they get part way on it and then they go back, or they get you know rather than yeah. like we say going all in. So hopefully that makes sense. That the question, but that that's really what's in my heart. Because I think people need to hear from you. Like how do you how did you make that? Because you you knew Jesus, you knew you were called. Yeah. But and you can explain what you explained to me off camera because I think that'll help people understand. When when you're called and you have a favor on your life. Lots of things start to happen, yeah. but are they the right things, and then where are they leading me? Yeah. So so I think two things happen <clears throat> when you're faced with something difficult. Um, you either disconnect, which is sitting in the back, no. right? Because mm -hmm. we don't have all the information, so um, we tend to feel, um, well, we're not very confident. Okay, fair um, enough. So we pull back, mm -hmm. so you disconnect. Um, the problem with disconnecting is that you, at some point you need to re-engage. And mm. if you don't ever re-engage, you stay in the back. Mm. Um, the other thing that happens is you press in or you lean in. You lean forward. Um, and oh, okay, so that's what, that's what Peter does. This is what Peter does. Okay. Peter says, I don't quite understand that, but, and he leans in, mm. right? Leans into Christ and is really wants to know. Um, so he's like the person that's really, I want to dig in and find the information. But a lot of times we have this tendency to go, I don't understand what's happening, so I'm just going to pull away. Let me ask you something in regards to that. So what we've talked about, we've because we've seen it, you're in that first group that's like, I'm going to disconnect because I'm just not sure, yeah. right? And I don't think that's intrinsically bad. If you're not sure, you got to weigh it out. you got to hear the Lord. you got to walk it out, okay? Yeah. Now, they want to keep walking in their faith, right? But sometimes they come to the resolution, that's not God, without leaning in. And then they kind of congregate because it says many of them walked away. Well, did they yeah. go back to the temple or where did they go? Yeah. In our day and age, 
they tend to kind of start home groups or they start uh, yeah. worship only. We're just going to seek the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not bad and on its face. But yeah. if it's coming from a place of um, God said something I didn't understand or there was, you know, there was a disconnect and yeah. I haven't really reconnected. This is my way of reconnecting. Can you talk to people a little bit about that and what it really looks like and what you I mean you've experienced so it's not like you're just talking yeah. but really what is that and and where does it lead um yeah so in short short story would be uh liz and i my wife and i um we we went to missouri for 11 years and we walk into the first church and um we've got young kids and we're very exuberant worshipers <laughs> and you know, you see the pastor get the wide-eyed and they beeline it right for our family as soon as uh, mm. church is over. And it's like instantly plug you into ministry. But because we're young, naive, um, you know, didn't even seek the Lord. Really mm. just were like, that's our purpose. We need to be in ministry mm. because we were told that's what you did. You you plug into a church and then you serve. Um, and Which and isn't bad. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that right. at all. Mm-hmm. Um but when you're thrown into like a youth pastor position, that's a different level of serving. Um, starting us off yes. at the usher would probably have been the better. Because they can get to know you. You can get to know right. them. There's, right. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we go with it. Um, this was a church that we ended up getting wounded from. Um, both parties. I, it, was, it was our fault. It was their fault. Mm. And we walk away. Um, but instead of having the wisdom to seek the Lord when we uh, were asked to step down, um, we instead go to the next church and we start all over again. The pastor sees us. He comes up to us afterwards. He starts grooming us, taking us out to dinner. And all of a sudden we're pitched with, you're going to be youth pastors mm-hmm. and never getting healing um, and no covering. Right. So I don't have any mentorship in my life at the mm-hmm. time. I don't have anybody directing me. Um, and I'm, I mean, you could say we sought the Lord in the way of like, God, is this a good, you know, if if you open this door, then it's you. Right, right. And that was the thing we were talking about off camera was that the grace and favor of God, when you're walking in that, Mm -hmm. doors around you just open. If you're gifted, doors will open. Doors will open. Mm -hmm. And we see that even with... Um, I call them gatherers. You know, there are people who yes. are gatherers. Mm-hmm. They have an ability to to gather people around them. People listen to them. They, they speak from authority. And doors just naturally open to these kinds of people. Mm-hmm. And you're not, in, I mean, for us, we weren't intended to walk through all of those doors. God, God didn't open up all those doors. His favor just opened up all those doors. And, and that's a great point. So I hope you guys, I know we don't tend to ask you to take notes, but go back, rewind that, take that note, because in Proverbs it says that uh, your gift will make room for you. Yeah. The, the, the wisdom that follows up is this a room I'm supposed to be living in, because Revelation 3 says, Behold, there stands before you an open door. But the, the, the clarity is he opened it, yeah. and no door, nobody can shut it. Sometimes we, even in an effort, right, we, we have a desire, which I think is good. God, the Holy Spirit gives you desires, right? You have desires yeah. in ministry. You have desires to see people's lives such. You have desires to, you know, maybe even attain to certain things in, in, in ministry, which I don't think are bad if they're God-given. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we, we can allow our charisma to open the door rather than waiting for the door that God opened. Yeah. And so in that, going back to the, the John 6, when that kind of crumples, which you talked about, right? Your yeah. youth pastor, you did things, they yeah. did things, it crumples, right? Brandon, where do you go? How do you rebound? How do you get back to what, to the all in, but with the wisdom that I'm in this for this, not necessarily just for uh, what I can give out or what they can get out of me? Yeah. Um, unfortunately for us, it was trial and error. Mm hmm. Um, so and Jesus is okay with trial and error, by I, I, the way. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think we learn a lot. I mean, I think we, it comes, you know, when you're trying to raise your kids and stuff, there's some things that you just have to let them fall. Mm. And, and that's good. You know, sometimes you just have to fail. Right. Um, you because, see that with the disciples, not just Peter. You see it with Thomas. He's like, you know the way Thomas. Thomas right. like, I don't know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so with this church, we, we, um, they, they, we go to the next place and they start, you know, hey, we want to 
bring you in as our youth pastors. By this time, I finally am reaching out to somebody who is a pastor, and I'm like, mm. hey, can I just bounce some things off of you? And he clearly looked into my life, and he's like, no, right. you need healing. Mm. You don't, because what happens is you jump into the next place of ministry. Um, it's kind of like a faux healing. It looks like healing, it smells mm. like healing, but it's not really healing. What you find out is you're just bearing that brokenness because you're back on the stage, you're back in people's lives, you're doing ministry again. You're fulfilling your calling. You're fulfilling your calling. So, mm. you know, you're never really getting that, like, and, and, and all along God's trying to put things, like, point out things in your life, but you're, you're so busy for the kingdom mm. that you don't have time for the Lord. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, and, and then I would say, just real quick, I would say in those situations, oftentimes vulnerability is not at a premium because if I, if I make myself vulnerable, then I make myself vulnerable to losing my position, which is like if I'm saying if I'm having issues or if I have this or that. Whereas if it's based on relationship and we don't have time to get into this today completely, but if it's based on relationship, your gifting and calling isn't what makes us in relationship. Right. So if you need healing, then there may be a season where like, okay, let's let's step aside. Let's walk through this. Right. And then let's see what God says on the other side. Yeah. Rather than, oh, you don't mean it. You don't, you can't give us what we need. We're going to shut the door. That's not how it yeah. works when God opens the door. Is that fair to say? It is. And, and it's not every church. No, it's not. But it, yeah. it's, it's a lot yeah. because it, and I don't think it's the fault of the pastor or the ministry staff yeah I, I think they're you know you're trying you, you've church has a lot of needs the statistic is 10 percent of the church do all the work yeah it, it, and yeah. we all know that so let's let's just pause it real quick We're, this is not anti-church or the no, faults no, of the church this all. is people who are saying hey i want to go on with christ yeah i'm following christ i'm excited about christ i have giftings i have callings and and all of the sudden Something is said, or he says something, or maybe Jesus says something to me personally that totally wrecks my boat. Like, eat my flesh, drink my... I can't even find that in the Bible. Yeah. That's cannibalism. What are you talking about? And uh, in Brandon's case, we're talking about, like, um, basically, I think there was, and correct me if I'm wrong, there was a clear call from, hey, son, let's stop doing ministry. Let's move into relationship. Yeah. But when you're already hurt, you're already wounded, there is that... There is that transition yeah. time to get back to where where uh peter really was right where yeah. he said i've come to to know and to believe to believe and to know however they phrase that uh, to believe and to know so let me get back to to you not without being bitter yeah. to the church without disconnecting from the church without disconnecting from people yeah. and um i wanted brandon to kind of just end with that in the sense that when you're in that place, and again, we're not anti-church and not every church does things like that. I, I, we're, please hear, hear our hearts. Yeah. It's an easy trap when you're gifted to fall into, um, to, hey, I can fill that position. And then they need that position filled. Yeah. Right? And so we can cover up a lot of things. Everything looks glossy on a resume. You know, we can cover up a lot of things. But at the same time, we're talking today to people, you feel a deeper draw from God. And these are the places that I'm walking, watching people walk through today, Brandon, is that deeper call, that deeper draw back to, I want to go all in yeah. because I've come to believe and to know. I've done ministry. I've tasted the aftertaste of just ministry. But I want to taste and see that he is good again. Yeah. If you're talking to them today, and they've been through that, I thought it was this, it went bad, <laughs> yeah. I, I hung on to my faith, as, you know, I'm still hanging on to my faith, but I'm not sure how to really go all in. What would you say to somebody in that situation? It's hard. Mm. First of all, you have to recognize that, um, that you're wounded. And that was the biggest thing. I didn't know I was wounded. Mm. Um it's kind of one of those things when you're watching a movie and you're like, why am I crying during this movie? Because mm. it's like, it's touching something inside of you that's really pressing on a wound. And mm. when you're going through all this stuff, you don't realize that you're you're wounded. It's kind of like uh, when, when the kid falls on the bike and they jump up real quick and they're like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. They don't realize that their knees are all bloody and mm. you, know, you don't realize it. 
because the adrenaline hits and you're like, I'm okay. Right. Um, and so we hit that. We hit that and I'm okay. I'm good. It wasn't until I'm in worship and I just start bawling my eyes out. And wow. I mean, the Lord just begins to minister to me. And he's like, you, mm. you need to get back to the one thing. Mm. And that's, that, was, that was our message for years and years is coming back to the one thing, the mm. one thing, the most important thing, the one thing that gives you life and breath. And, mm. and, and the whole reason I want to get up in the morning is to spend time with the Lord. And it was in that moment that I just began to shut everything down around me. Mm. And I stopped listening to messages because I was somebody who was always grabbing a message from mm -hmm, wherever mm -hmm. I could and listen to this worship and everything and build me up and look at and I just sat with the Lord and my mm. word and I spent time mm. and there was a lot of silence and I had to be comfortable in the silence mm. with him so when Peter denies Christ they catch each other's gaze he goes out and sobs because it has that yeah. but there's a ton of silence after that, guys. You have to understand that. Yeah. Jesus is doing other things. I mean, they have some interaction, but it is not a closure. It is not a ceiling until they get to the seashore. Yeah. And so, we're, again, we're not going to talk about all of that. But I appreciate Brandon's heart. We want to leave you with that. If you want to go all in, then, then sit in the silence and let him begin to speak to you. That is not a place of disconnection. Find a house where they value you for who Christ is in you, not what you can do. And stay there until God releases you, heals you. How do I know that? Psalms 23, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions. The places I get wounded, mm. he restores. It's not till after that that it says, then he leads me on the path of righteousness. Yeah. If you're looking to go all in and you've been through some of these things, the twists and the turns of ministry, and, and there's no judgment, guys, please. We all... Like we said, look at all the apostles. You can see many of their twists and turns of their life, but it always came back to the follow me or the yeah. one thing, as Brandon said, that was their one thing, follow me. It always comes back to that, and he'll lead you back to that. So take heart. You can still go all in. It's still available to you. Yeah. You just may need a season of silence to sit by still waters. If you don't know where that it is, ask him this week and say, God, where is the church? that is a deep well by still waters that will help restore my soul and get me back on the path of righteousness. He'll lead you there. And when he does, trust me, you'll be challenged to stay there and Satan will push against you, but you push back and say, no, Amen. this is where God brought me. This is what I'm going to do. And um, this is where I'm going to be. Brandon, thank you so much. Yeah. I look forward to doing it uh, again uh, in the near future. We appreciate you guys. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, RCC Second Cup, please do. Uh, if not, oh, you can also find us uh, on Facebook um, and Instagram, and you will be able to find us on our app as soon as that is available, hopefully uh, this week. So uh, we love you guys. Thank you, and we'll talk to you soon.